we have now constructed the set e okay now what this is the slightly complicated part everybody has trouble with using doing this part of the lasalle invariance is to find the set m okay and m has to be invariant and inside e and it is the largest invariant set okay can't be anything cannot be any invariant set larger than this okay now how do we do this is how do we usually do this i mean because i don't know how to find the largest and smallest right i mean it's not like an optimization problem that i find largest and smallest because you can see that uh, these will be very complicated sets yeah this kind of optimization will be virtually impossible to do huh? basically you are you the, you will not find an engine which will solve this optimization problem if i actually thought of finding the largest invariant set and all because you'll have to initialize you have to take all initial conditions and <laughs> try to do something okay not possible not possible so what i will do is we or what everybody does not what i will do yeah what everybody does is assume e is invariant okay so we actually assume that e is itself an invariant set okay so uh, this sort of helps us continue forward what does it mean if e is invariant okay what do you need for e to be invariant it means if i start inside e i must remain inside e but look at the interesting thing what is the set e is this guy okay all right it is this guy now the first term is a continuous could be a continuous quantity right it it can take any value between minus 2 pi to 2 pi notice this guy can take any value between minus 2 pi to 2 pi so i can't really conclude too much about this but what we use is the fact that the second term that is x2 has to be zero is fixed so for me to be invariant and to remain inside e i need x2 to be identically zero for all e in this case yeah i need x2 to be identically zero and what does this mean if something is zero forever or some constant forever and all these are continuous right x1 x2 is continuous because i have a differential equation right so obviously continuous nice properties so what does it mean if x2 is zero for all time or any constant for all time ha huh? no not really right that that would mean all states are zero only one state being zero is not equal just like you know that alpha comma zero is not an equilibrium right i hope you understand that alpha uh, any x1 is not the equilibrium otherwise it would be this zero velocity zero velocity zero velocity all this will be equilibrium so this is not an equilibrium no what can i say if if any any quantity is if any function is the constant function what do we know about the function this is a function of time right i mean although i write it like this it's actually a function of time then x2 dot is identically zero yeah x2 dot has to be identically that's the only way function can be a constant function hmm? all right which means what what is x2 dot anybody remember this minus k sin x1 minus cx2 hmm? this has to be identically zero all of this to make e invariant all of this is to make the set e invariant without this happening set e cannot be made invariant okay now i already know that this guy is already going to zero right and the left hand side is already zero 
so what do i know what do i conclude this also has to converge to zero not converge to zero whatever has to be zero hmm? okay has to be zero and what do i know uh, sin x1 is equal to zero at what x1 equal to what n pi right so 0 pi i will not write 2 pi because after that it's repetitions right i'll just write 0 and pi hmm? and you see 0 and pi are both in our set omega right both in our set omega so we started by assuming that e is the invariant set but to ensure that e is in fact invariant i required sin x1 to be 0 which gave me exactly two values huh? not all of e not all of e okay everything else is the same right 0 and pi huh? all other angles are the same you can write them if you want but yeah you can write 0 and pi i know 2 pi is also there but it's all the same so i'm not including them huh? so what do i have i have that the invariant set is what m is equal to what now what is the set m now 0 0 and pi 0 ok all right just by starting with e being invariant i have concluded that only these two points constitute the invariant set ok so m is the invariant set the largest invariant set you cannot have anything more why because i started with e being invariant which is the largest set i had to work with from there i could only get out that these two points give invariance and what are these points these are exactly the this and this huh? so what does lasalle invariance say because i have satisfied all the requirements of the lasalle invariance i constructed a compact invariant omega right i had a v and a v, v positive semi definite v dot negative semi definite in the in omega in fact it is in d but in omega also okay and so and then i constructed the e and the m sets so i have satisfied all the requirements of the lasalle invariance principle so lasalle invariance principle says that if i start in this set omega uh, not anywhere in the domain if i start in this set omega okay then i will converge to this okay so interestingly what i have been able to prove is still not if you say everything hmm? because although there is no restriction on the angle right it says if you start in omega okay so i can start at any angle because minus 2 pi to 2 pi close set includes all the angles no problem okay and it says i will converge to either this point or this point it doesn't specify which point you can converge here or here no problem but the velocity is restricted hmm? there is a restriction in the velocity although again in reality you know what i can start at any velocity theoretically and i will converge to an equilibrium one of the two equilibrium for a pendulum okay in fact i'll converge to this equilibrium only i will never converge to this equilibrium if the velocity is anything but zero i will converge to this equilibrium only okay so in fact any velocity is allowed in reality but i have only been able to prove this much okay so there is a caveat okay i mean even lasalle invariance doesn't let us prove what we know in reality huh? but this is more than enough because i can choose any c if you give me velocity 1e power 6 i will choose a c accordingly and tell you yeah this will work yeah because all i have to do is c c was nothing c is just a artifact of our imagination hmm? so c is nothing we created it so if you give me 1e to the power 6 1e to the power 10 velocity for whatever reason you want to put a rocket thruster on the pendulum but you will i can still guarantee that you will converge to the equilibrium by choosing a large enough c okay 
but yeah so in theory once you fix a c your velocities are bounded yeah not unbounded velocities unbounded velocities are not okay which is obviously fair enough huh? for all intents and purposes okay so do you all understand how to use the lasar invariance i have also asked the ts to try some examples i hope they try something other than the pendulum anyway um with lasal invariance application of the general lasal invariance with multiple equilibrium okay so it's important that we follow this now i also want to state uh, if you have no other no questions on this i want to state the stability versions of these theorems okay so lasal invariance was obviously by lasal yeah but then the stability versions of these theorems uh, were almost parallelly developed by uh, krasovsky barbashin okay so therefore i like to call it krasovsky barbashin lasal theorems uh, some books call it krasovsky lasal some call it barbashin lasal but whatever uh, it's better to put all the names um, so these are very close to lasal theorems but they only deal with stability of the zero equilibrium okay here you have a general multi multi stability what you can call multi stability because multiple points you can re reach a limit set yeah here you specialize to reaching the origin only yeah and uh, how do we do that we no longer start with a v which is only positive semi definite we actually start with a proper lyapunov candidate okay this is now a proper lyapunov candidate it's positive definite in c1 and we just have semi definiteness on the v dot such lyapunov candidates are called non strict lyapunov functions okay uh, for all x in d notice for all x in d hmm? not in any omega yeah? you see that the omega is carefully missing here there is no omega here why because i know that i can construct a omega just by this fact we just did in the example hmm? and then if i define the s similarly whatever we called e here is the s here just because it's a stability theorem so i'm using a different notation that's all if you define the s as such uh, and if x equal to 0 is the only invariant trajectory in s this is just wording that some texts use but this is the same as saying the set x equal to 0 is the largest invariant set inside s then x equal to 0 is asymptotically stable okay on the other and then the, you can also state a global version which says that if now you don't have a domain you have all of rn okay again negative semi definite in all of rn and you have the same things happening then you have global asymptotic stability okay that's it if the domain goes away then you have global asymptotic stability okay notice all these results lasal invariance barbashin krasovsky lasal all these are only for time invariant systems or autonomous systems okay for time varying systems the results are significantly more complicated okay i mean not easy to apply these results okay because the notions of limit points and limit sets itself becomes very messy hmm? okay all right so uh, these are the stability versions of the theorems all right now if you go back to our example how would i do the stability version i am in fact this is actually pretty straight forward yeah what will i do i will no longer take minus 2 pi to 2 pi i will just take minus pi to pi because i only want the bottom equilibrium included in the set now because i am looking to do stability of zero equilibrium so i will not include the top equilibrium in my set d okay so my set d will now contain only minus pi to pi okay anyway this is something i'll ask you to complete yeah but the rest of the steps are exactly the same you still have a v okay notice that as soon as i choose x1 in minus pi to pi this is positive definite this we discussed right earlier in the example we did this example okay if x1 is in the minus pi to pi range not minus 2 pi to 2 pi range in the minus pi to pi range 
this is a positive definite function right i hope you all agree yes because this function will not be zero anywhere but at zero zero the problem with the larger range is 2 pi is included then it is not positive definite but if 2 pi is not included so minus pi to pi then 0 is the only yeah. point that is x1 equal to 0 is the only point where this can become 0 yeah x1 x2 equal to 0 nowhere else okay so the only difference is in the domain okay so it will become minus pi to pi cross r after that it is very straightforward. v is positive definite, v dot is negative semi definite in the domain okay and after that the same analysis goes through it. This analysis is not changing. The set E or in this case the set S whatever you can call it S but this is going to be exactly the same right because v dot is exactly the same. So, this set is the same. If this set is the same, the set M is the same without this guy because minus pi to pi does not contain pi at all hmm? minus pi to pi open set remember we took uh, for this domain is minus pi comma pi okay for ap applying the barbachian krasovsky lasalle we took we take this so, this is not even part of this set ok. So, m contains only the origin, m contains only the origin ok. All this, so nothing changed in the analysis, I just shortened my or, or reduced the size of my domain and just by reducing the size of my domain. Uh, instead of applying the general Lasalle principle, I am applying the Barbashim Krasovsky Lasalle. Why? Because by shrinking the domain, domain, I remove this equilibrium. Minus pi to pi does not contain this guy. Yeah, because I excluded pi. Okay, that is all. So, by shrinking, so what am I doing? By saying minus pi to pi, it is starting from here and here. So, it is like, it, it, it goes from here all the way to slightly here that is it minus pi to pi is just everything but that vertical upward vertical line ok. So, I have essentially taken everything but that top vertical line and so I have skipped the second equilibrium. Once I skip the second equilibrium there is only one equilibrium ok and remember I always told you when you have one equilibrium only then you can talk about you know stability or global stability if you have multiple equilibria then you have to think Lasalle type ideas. Huh? So, that is all. I shrunk the domain so that I have one equilibrium in this domain and then applying Barbashim Krasovsky Lasalle is very easy because the set E remains the same and the set M contains only the zero equilibrium and that is proof that zero is asymptotically stable, huh? not global because of this restriction in the domain is not global, but whatever it is asymptotically stable more than enough ok. And this is in fact uh, sounds more general I did not have to do all this uh, omega construction and all right. It gave me asymptotic stability. So, basically what it is saying is if you start anywhere but at this equilibrium anywhere but this equilibrium. So, you can start anywhere arbitrarily close to it, but away from that equilibrium then you will fall here which is what is the reality also right you can verify that very easily in experiments all right is that clear ok. The spring mass damper example is also very similar and much easier huh? this is a spring mass damper is a just a linear version of the pendulum linearized pendulum if you may this is what the dynamics looks like x1 dot is x2, x2 dot is minus k1 x1 minus k2 x2. The constants k1 and k2 depend on yeah, spring mass coefficients alright. And what do I do? I take V as the energy right. This is the what is this term? 
potential energy potential energy this is the spring energy hmm? energy stored in the spring this guy and this is the kinetic energy term okay spring energy potential energy kinetic energy if you take the derivative and of course you can see that this is all nice and radially unbounded in fact hmm? v is radially unbounded i hope that's clear to you and yeah, this is yeah in fact in all of rn the domain you don't even have to worry about the domain here sorry all of r2 okay this is v is valid in all of r2 v dot is negative semi definite in all of r2 and v is radially unbounded in all of r2 okay so once you have that uh, it's again the same kind of s construction right because sorry i again e has been used it doesn't matter so what is the set e now the set e is just v dot equal to 0 which is the same amazing no? it comes out to be exactly the same you just need x1 comma 0 all sets of the form x1 comma 0 okay now i know 0 has to remain you have to the second variable or x2 has to remain at 0 for all time therefore x2 dot has to remain at 0 for all time which means that minus k1 x2 x1 minus k2 x2 has to be 0 for all time same logic but x2 is already 0 so x1 also has to be 0 for all time so what is the largest invariant set in e x2 was already 0 now i also want x1 to be 0 so 0 0 is the only invariant set inside this okay from every other point you will move okay so they are not invariant set okay you cannot find any other invariant set so this is the largest invariant set inside e okay so this is in fact your whatever m set if you may yeah and so any trajectory which starts anywhere in fact will converge to this 0 0 equilibrium okay again it's a linear system you could have very well computed the eigenvalues and obviously found out that they were negative and you would have concluded exponential stability this is just giving you an alternate way but this is just a way of using this theorem that's all i mean you have already seen that i can use it for nonlinear systems also in fact you can you use it uh, lasalle invariance like i said is a uh, method of choice for typically for geometers because like i said because uh, they like to use the energy as the Lyapunov candidate and whenever you use the energy of the as a Lyapunov candidate for these conservative type systems that is with no external forces invariably your v dot will be zero right because energy is conserved right it will not be less than equal to anything or it will be exactly zero and from there if you want to conclude anything you have to use lasalle invariance okay you have no choice but to use lasalle invariance okay so uh, lasalle invariance is a pretty very very strong method yeah I'm not sure if we'll have time, but um, there is also what adaptive control folks use is the notion of Barbalat's lemma. It's a different way of uh, doing this Barbashin Krasov Lasalle, okay, um, which is more, um, I would say, you might find it easier to use uh, and it can be used for time varying systems also, okay. Here you can't, yeah, you can't use these for time varying systems, these results in this form. Uh, uh, but Babelard's lemma also cannot be used for multiple equilibria case. Hmm? It, so, so the general Lasalle invariance principle is a very powerful result. Yeah, it's a very very strong result. You can't uh, get multiple equilibria type results from any uh, typically any other method. Okay, not easy, not easy. You have Poincaré-Benedictson theorem and all that, but um, not easy. They have all sorts of interesting assumptions which you may not satisfy. Yeah. So, LaSalle invariance is actually a very, very powerful tool that way. Yeah.